Okay. Uh, last time, what we ended up talking about was uh, basically one effect of collisions in a plasma, electrical conductivity or resistivity. And today, what we want to talk about uh, is particle diffusion or, and heat diffusion and so forth and so on. So basically, what we want to talk about is diffusion in a plasma. And mostly what we're going to talk about is due to uh, collisions, again, of electrons and ions with neutrals, electrons, and ions. Now, first, what we need to talk about is a little bit of a generic comment about what is diffusion, how does it work, and so forth and so on. And basically, the standard model for this is sort of diffusion is a random walk process. So I need to talk about that. Um, and the sort of uh, classical example given away, given for this uh, is that of a drunk uh, going away from a light pole. So, you know, we sort of imagine we have a light pole here. And uh, the light, light pole, by the way, is not supposed to be lit, so it's an attraction point. It's just a source, a, a, a starting point. And so, you know, the drunk goes one direction for a little while, and then another direction, you know, staggers a bit. And the idea is the drunk just keeps moving randomly, and at any one time, you know, the, the staggering goes in any one direction, you know, with some step size. So what we describe this with is that there's some delta x that is taken in each step, and in a time, uh, it takes a certain finite time to do that, delta t. So if we were to make a plot of the magnitude of delta x as a function of, of time, and this is actually, uh, I should say actually this delta x is the delta x, it's a little different delta x than that one, uh, but this is the, let me do it as the change in x then. Uh, this is the change in x away from the light pole as a function of time. So the, I should maybe mark that on here. So this is my distance, uh, say, delta x. And so the idea is that uh, as the drunk goes along, you know, starts moving one direction, then kind of back the other one, and then back, and 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 so forth, okay, a very random process, such that, okay, the average uh, over time, over some fairly long time, of delta x, or delta, uh, the other delta x, is actually zero. However, notice that while it's true that the random walk is not in any uniform direction away from the lamppost. I mean, it's irregular back and forth. On average, okay, the random walk is moving away from the light post. So the way I can emphasize that is if we were to plot instead of delta x, we plotted delta x squared. And actually, my little delta x is confusing here, so let me leave it as delta x squared as a function of time. Then in that case, we observe that what happens is that, sure, there's sort of irregularity. But, but basically, the further I go in time, the more I develop into a given line, okay, uh, through all of this. Um, and actually, the slope of that line is going to turn out to be the diffusion coefficient. So what I want to say is that the average of delta x squared is not equal to 0. And in fact, what it is is it's linearly proportional to the time delta t, so it's proportional to d delta t. So we can then get an, an estimate of the diffusion coefficient, which is delta x squared over delta t. And what are the units of a diffusion coefficient? Well, it's like, say, meters squared per second in MKS units. So it's the rate of spreading in area, okay, uh, encompassed by this random walk process um, as a function of time. Now, we need to kind of go on a little bit here and make this a little more mathematical. And the question is now, let us apply this random walk process uh, 
to an inhomogeneous medium. Uh, could be any medium, but we're, of course, thinking of a plasma. And in particular, what we'd like to know is if we have a, a density profile, density gradient, then um, you know, what, what particle flux does that cause? And we're going to obtain a fixed law, fixed diffusion law from this. So let's uh, do that. So the idea is we want to consider um, the effect of a random walk process. And by the way, collisions are obviously a, a random walk process, at least neutral, neutral collisions. Um, of a random walk process uh, in an inhomogeneous, got a density gradient in it, medium. And I could say weakly inhomogeneous, as we'll make an approximation in a moment, that my individual steps, delta x, are small compared to the inhomogeneity scale length. So the basic idea is what we want to do is assume that all particles in the medium, that, or in particular each particle, is displaced a distance delta x in a time delta t. And this delta x may be plus or minus. Uh, so I should maybe say is randomly displaced. So here what we have in mind is that we've got, say, a density profile. And um, so maybe we've got a, you know, the density and homogeneity as a function of distance x. And we're going to have a distance here. Um, here's going to be some particular position just some particular position in the plasma, and this will be a distance x naught plus delta x away, and this will be a distance x naught minus delta x away. And what we would actually like to calculate is what is the particle, the net particle flux in this plasma, in this plasma or medium, due to this inhomogeneity and this random walk process going on. So what we want to do is calculate the net particle flux, gamma, which is actually equal to what we're going to call gamma plus minus gamma minus. And gamma plus is just the particle flux in this direction. And gamma minus is the particle flux in that direction uh, due to random walk in the inhomogeneous medium. And so uh, how do we go about doing that, or what do we worry about, or what do you want to call it? Well, the first thing uh, we want to assume is that each of these little steps, delta x, is small compared to the length over which the, the density varies. So what we do not want to have is, say, a density profile that comes down and does this. It's got to be very smoothly varying compared to these distances delta x. So mathematically, the way we uh, do that is we use the word <coughs> that we assume a weakly inhomogeneous medium. And that's supposed to be a catchword for that this distance delta x, the random walk step size, is small compared to the density in homogeneity scale length. So it's, you know, 1 over nd ndx would be a gradient, and it's normalized by the density. So this would have the units of a length, and this would be defined as L. And this distance L would be the distance over which this density say, doubled or halved or something like that, you know. So the L distance would be over to about here, let's say. Okay, so it goes down to about there. So this would be that distance L. So what we're saying when we say the words weakly inhomogeneous medium is that we're saying that these random steps are 
on short scales compared to the distance over which the density varies by a factor of two or, or logarithmically, you know, by exponential length or something like that. Whatever length you have is relevance. Okay, so what we need to do now is to calculate these two particle fluxes, gamma plus and gamma minus. Um, so let's say uh, calculate gamma plus, comma, gamma minus. Okay, now what we have in mind as a sort of physical model is that in time delta t, all the particles that are in, let us say, one side of this uh, part here, um, namely in this part right here, let's say, they're going to move. And if it's a random walk process, half the particles will go to the left and half the particles will go to the right. Okay? It's a random walk. You know, I start all the particles and they're going to go one way or the other. Half go one way, half go the other way. So in answer to the so in time delta t, uh, half of the particles in the this x minus delta x uh, to x naught, sorry, x naught minus delta x to x naught, uh, travel to the right. at the position x equals x naught. So therefore, uh, the particle flux which we want, gamma plus, will just be one half. I have to just integrate how many particles do I have, and it's in, it'll be, uh, I'll integrate dx n of x from x minus delta x, from x naught minus delta x to x naught. Um, but because Oh, and, and uh, actually I need a rate here, so this is all going to happen in a unit time delta t. So I'll, I'll put in a delta t downstairs. Now, uh, this is okay, but the thing is that my density, I said, was weakly inhomogeneous, so I find it convenient to expand n of x in a Taylor series. And so we have dx over delta t. And then we have n of x naught plus x minus x naught dn dx plus higher order terms. And now, since n of x is a, is a constant, uh, what this will give us is just 1 over 2 uh, delta t. Move it up here so we can see it. And then from the first integral, we'll get n of x naught times delta x. And from the second one, okay, we will get, um, it turns out you work through it, and you get minus delta x squared over 2 uh, dn dx. And then we would get higher order terms. So this is the particle flux moving to the right, so to right. Similarly, we have the particle flux going to the left as one half, uh, and then that'll be the integral from x naught to x naught plus delta x, dx, n of x, delta t. And if you make the same Taylor series expansion now, this becomes 1 over 2 delta t times n of x naught delta x. And then, because this is over a positive increment, it turns out this becomes minus delta x squared over 2 dn dx. I'm sorry, plus dn dx plus higher order terms. So now what I want to do is I want to get the net flux. And so... I want to get that gamma is equal to gamma plus uh, minus gamma minus. And if I look at this, I find these two terms will cancel. And these two terms will add. And so what we end up with is minus, and the two inside will go away, 
So I'll have one. I'll have minus delta x squared over two delta t. Still got the two out in front. Times dn dx. And now this is often written then as minus a diffusion coefficient dn dx where obviously the diffusion this is the diffusion coefficient and written in this form that gamma is minus d dn dx is then this is called fix law fix diffusion law So let's, and notice that uh, we did a little estimate on our random walk process, and we found that the diffusion coefficient was delta x squared over delta t, and all we missed was the factor of 2, right? But, you know, what's a factor of 2 in the business? No, uh, the comment is, scaling-wise, okay, you get the right answer, but numerically, you have to do a little more work to get numerical factors right. So let me... Uh, summarize this just a little bit to say what, what fixed diffusion law is. So, um, so the basic idea is fixed diffusion law. It says in more general terms that the particle flux vectorially is minus d grad n and that the diffusion coefficient is approximately equal to, and people often put an ensemble average because they say, well, you know, maybe I have not all random step sizes are exactly equal, but rather there's a little bit of, you know, some of them are longer than others, and so I take an average of them. And then I divide this by 2 delta t, and notice that this has the units of, say, meter squared per second. And let me say, any time you're dealing with a diffusion, diffusive process in any medium, plasma, air in the room, anything else, diffusion is almost always basically of this form fundamentally. And then there are a few other terms. And the basic question whenever you ask about diffusion, okay, is what is your typical delta x, random step size, and what is your typical delta t, time scale, for that to happen? So now what we want to do is be more specific on this general sort of comment. And so we want to talk about a collisional plasma using that particular law. So let's talk about um, collisional diffusion in a plasma. Um, what's the appropriate step size, random walk step size, and random time that's appropriate for collisional processes in a plasma? How about the time first? That's just one over the collision frequency, uh, or sometimes we've called this, of course, the collision time tau. And what's the appropriate step size? I'm thinking, by the way, a non-magnetized plasma, not worrying about which types of collisions and so forth. Well, it's sort of I travel at a velocity v for a time tau, or for at a rate one or a, for. A, well, let me do it this way. It's a v delta t, and so this is of order v over nu, which, however, is what we usually call the collisional mean-free path. Okay. So I can let me say it this way: guess that I will get a diffusion coefficient which is of the order of, again, delta x squared over delta t. And I'll even put in the 2 this time for reasons that will become obvious in a moment. Uh, so this will become lambda squared over 2 divided by nu. And so it becomes nu lambda squared over 2. And that's a, a fairly simple answer. But uh, let's go on a little bit further. Let's go back to lambda. So this is nu over 2. Lambda was, let's make it v thermal squared over nu squared. And if we do that, then this becomes nu. I cancel out one of the factors here of nu. And uh, then this becomes nu 
and then one half v thermal squared is two t over m. And now you see why I was guarding that factor of two. I can cancel that out. And uh, what we find for the diffusion coefficient, we now I'm just guessing, so to speak, this is a phenomenological argument, is that we expect that the diffusion coefficient is t over m nu. So what I want to do now is say, OK, this is sort of a guess, a phenomenological, using my simple random walk argument as to what we expect the particle diffusion in a plasma to look like. Now let's really look at the equations, basically particle conservation and momentum conservation, and see if that is indeed what we get and what all happens, because it turns out a plasma is a little bit more complicated than this. OK. So um, consider, let's put it this way, consider plasma uh, fluid equations. And in particular, we have density conservation, dn dt, plus del dot nv is equal to 0. Again, it's 0 because we do not create or destroy particles. Uh, we may slow them down or do other things, but we don't destroy the particles. And then we also have momentum conservation, uh, mn dv dt is nqe minus gradient of pressure, oh, and I should have said for a moment with no magnetic field, minus grad P minus mn nu times V. Now, uh, we'd like to calculate the particle flux gamma. And let's just recall that gamma is, in fact, nothing other than NV. Okay, it's a product of the density times the flow velocity. Some people would rather consider gamma the quantity, and other people would rather consider the flow velocity V. But it doesn't make too much difference. The particle flux is the density times the flow velocity. So what I need to do is, in some sense, solve these equations for, so this is actually gamma, by the way. This is gamma. So I can also write the continuity equation. Many people write it as dn dt plus del dot gamma equals 0. Um, but I need to somehow solve what appears to be the momentum balance equation here for the flow velocity v or the product nv. So there's a gamma right there. Okay. And I'd rather do that in equilibrium uh, for a moment. So equilibrium, of course, equilibrium just means I take whatever I had for a time derivative and set it to 0. Um, now, also, I'd like to simplify things. Um, by saying that I'll consider uh, T equals constant, which would be called an isothermal plasma. And then my um, grad P, okay, just becomes uh, T grad N. And then doing that, OK, my momentum balance equation then just becomes 0 is equal to nqe minus t grad n and then minus uh, mn nu v. And I can then solve that for the particle flow v or particle flux nv caused by the combination of a density gradient and electric field, namely the flow velocity will be um, Q over M nu times the electric field minus T uh, over M nu times 1 over N grad N. Now, this first term, well, and we write this, of course, as the mobility times the electric field. And then we can write this as minus D grad N. Uh, and it's divided by n, it turns out. Um, just normalizations that I happen to put in here. Uh, so this is, again, from last, same as last time. This is called the mobility. It's the 
you know, movement of the, elect of the fluid in response to the electric field. And this last term is the diffusion, and that's the fixed law, which we just derived. And now it's quite interesting. What did we get for D here a little bit ago? Well, we've just implied that this is actually D. I take NV up here, and it's gamma is equal to minus D grad N, M nu. So in this case, because I took account of the factor of 2 right um, in my manipulations, we actually got the right coefficient, so to speak. So the net result, again, then, is that the particle flux is equal to NV is equal to um, uh, N mu E and then minus D grad N. And the idea is that then this is a, uh, an equation for the particle flux, mobility and diffusion. Diffusion part is just fixed diffusion law which we will use into this continuity equation, density continuity equation. Okay. Now, so that's, uh, that's all there is to it for diffusion for gas in this room or something like that. But in a plasma, we've got an additional problem. And the additional problem is that, in fact, D and mu are not the same for electrons and ions. Okay? They're just some arbitrarily different constants. Electrons, you know, they're lightweight. They respond differently for diffusion. They respond differently for mobility. Uh, the electrons are much more mobile than the ions. So in general, we have the gamma E, the particle flux for the electrons, is not equal to the particle flux for the ions. So then what happens? Well, typically the electrons are fast-moving guys. And so they go places, they leave. But if electrons leave, they build up a charge density, okay? Positive charge density, positive potential that tries to hold them back. And so the problem is that we can't consider diffusion and mobility of the electrons separate from the ions. They somehow, the two species have got to work together. And basically what they do is they work together to determine some self-consistent or what's called ambipolar electric field to make it all come into equilibrium to cause the electron and ion particle fluxes to be the same. So what we want to do is now go through a bit of the mathematics of, uh, of how that goes. So first, uh, let's note uh, in general that DE does not equal DI and mu E does not equal mu I. And so uh, this leads to the, to the statement then that gamma E does not equal gamma I in general. In general means before I specify the electric field. Uh, and so let's imagine that we went back to our continuity equations, dN dt plus del dot gamma equals zero, and suppose that I multiplied them by charge and summed over species. Then what this equation gives me is that I get the derivative of the charge density with respect to T plus the divergence of Q gamma would be just the current is equal to zero. So the current here is equal to the sum over species of Qj gamma j. And this is then not equal to zero in general. So what happens is, it, the, mathematically, what all this is saying is, gosh, uh, if the particle fluxes of the ions and electrons aren't equal, then there will be a current that forms in the plasma because of the two flows, an electrical current. That electrical current flowing, the divergence of that, will lead to a local charge density increase. Okay, So we'll get a charge buildup. Um, but you know, we know that a plasma is supposed to be quasi-neutral. Okay? So, but plasma must be quasi-neutral at least, let me say it that way, for length, scale lengths long compared to the Debye length. Okay? And so what this does is this uh, forces, 
the electron particle flux to be equal to the ion particle flux. And so what we're going to do now is set the electron and ion particle fluxes equal to each other and solve for what electric field will build up in the plasma to cause that to happen. So what is the self-consistent or ambipolar uh, electro, uh, uh, electric field that builds up um, to cause that to happen? Um, so, let's say net E field to cause gamma E equals gamma I. You know, what is that? Well, gamma E is equal to N sub E mu sub E uh, E and then minus electron diffusion times the gradient of the den electron density. And then this has got to be equal to gamma I, which is the same thing with ion subscripts, Ni mu I E minus uh, Di grad N. And we're going to consider, by the way, for simplicity, just electron-proton plasma, so we don't have to worry about how many charges the ions have on them. They all have unity um, unit charge on them. Okay, so uh, if we, you know, just equate these, then we can just, you know, bring this term over here and, and or bring this term over here and, and bring that term over here and divide and find. And what we get is then that the electric field times mu i minus mu e is equal to minus dE minus dI grad n. Uh, and therefore that Oh, and we need to take account of the fact that mu sub e, let's remember that mu, a couple of lines back here, uh, was equal to q over m nu. So it's a signed quantity, and in particular elect for electrons is negative. So actually mu e is the absolute value, okay, is minus the absolute value of mu e since mu e is negative. So taking that into account, and then we find that the electric field that has to be built up in general is minus dE minus dI divided by mu I and then plus the absolute value of mu E all times grad N. So this particular electric field is then the self-consistent electric field that builds up so as to cause the electron and ion particle fluxes to be equal and in equilibrium so I don't, you know, have a constant, so I can be in equilibrium, not have a constant charge density buildup. And this is called the ambipolar, means whatever electric field, uh, ambipolar electric field, because it is the electric field that causes the losses to be, or the particle flows to be ambipolar, which is to say both poles, both polarities to go at the same uh, flux rate. Now, once I know the electric field, and I said these two fluxes are equal, I would like to know what is the absolute magnitude of whatever value that is. Okay? So I would like to determine the gamma A, which is called the ambipolar particle flux. And I can evaluate it by plugging in the, this electric field into either the ion expression or the electron expression. Either one will work fine. I'll choose the ion one because it gets me out of the negative business there. So this becomes Ni mu I, okay, times the electric field. So put a minus out here, and then dE minus dI divided by mu I plus absolute value of mu E, and then grad N. And so I just took care of the first term, the electric field term, and then there'll be a minus dI times grad N. Now that looks a little on the complicated side, so we'll put it all over a common denominator. Um, and, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I did have, I was missing a factor here, I can see. Um, I had an N in front of the mu's, so there was actually an N there, and so I made to make this a grad N over N. So there's a grad N over N.
and then those two ends cancel. So now everything is just proportional to grad n. So we can write, and everything's got a sort of minus sign in front of it. So we'll put it all proportional to grad n and divided by this common denominator, which is mu i plus the absolute value of mu e. And in the numerator, then, we'll have first mu i de minus mu i di. Uh, and then the di gets multiplied by the stuff in the denominator. So this is minus mu i di and then minus ab um, absolute value of mu e uh, di. I'm sorry, these are both plus. Uh, because I took an overall minus sign out in front. Anyway, of course, what happens here is those two terms cancel. And um, then what we find is the net ambipolar. Um, so particle flux. is given then by gamma ambipolar is equal to minus and uh, now we see well I'm sorry okay uh, is equal to minus uh, mu i de plus the absolute value mu e di divided by mu i sort of an average diffusion coefficient mu i plus the, av the absolute value of mu e all times grad n. And so then we would often call this the ambipolar diffusion coefficient d sub a. So we write this as minus d sub a grad n. So in other words, what we've shown is that since the ions and electrons do have different mobilities and particle diffusion coefficients. In fact, uh, an electric field builds up, an ambipolar electric field, to make the two particle fluxes the same. Once they are the same, then there's a common flow velocity, which would lead to, of course, no net current flow. Okay, J is equal to zero. Uh, and this diffusion coefficient, uh, or there's a diffusion coefficient, which is a sort of average diffusion coefficient uh, that the whole plasma proceeds at. Now, some sort of observations about this. Um, often, you remember, since the mobility was equal to um, Q over M nu, uh, and the diffusion coefficient was uh, T over M nu, the electrons have by far the largest mobility square root of mass ratio, actually, because, uh, well, because of the collision difference. But we won't we'll go into that. But anyway, they have the bigger mobility. So let's just say, usually, mu sub e is much greater than mu sub i. And this leads to a d sub a approximately equal to, well, it's, or equal to uh, mu i d e plus average value mu e d i all over mu i plus absolute value mu e. And that sort of means we can just, roughly speaking, neglect the mu i down there. And then putting this in, this becomes um, di plus then mu i uh, over absolute value mu e de. And then if we make use of the fact for this particular diffusion coefficient, um, then I can ask what this particular last value is, namely mu i over the absolute value of mu e de. Um, let's just work out what these things are. So this is q i over m i nu i. And the mu e in the denominator becomes q e absolute value divided by m e nu e. And the diffusion coefficient becomes of the electrons is T e over M e nu e. So if we go through electron-proton plasma, that's unity. Uh, the two 
more quantities go out. And what we get then finally is that this is equal to Te over Mi nu i. And that's sort of not either the electron diffusion coefficient or the ion diffusion coefficient, some sort of mix. And in particular, we can write it as Te over Ti times Ti over Mi nu i. And that is the ion diffusion coefficient. So what we find is that the ambipolar diffusion coefficient then, usually under this limit, is like um, di, but then it's times 1 plus te over ti, and it's approximately equal to then 2 di. So it says the ambipolar diffusion coefficient is not the faster moving species, which is the electrons. They sort of try to leave, but an electric field builds up to cause them not to leave so fast. And the net rate becomes related to the slowest moving species, namely the ions. But it's sort of like twice the ion speed, okay? It sort of pulls on the ions. You know, the electric field builds up to hold back the electrons. But that same electric field pulls on the ions, and it roughly doubles the ion loss rates or ion diffusion rates or ion fluxes and so forth and so on. So let's kind of summarize um, observations or notes then. First, that the ambipolar diffusion coefficient is the net one is governed by diffusion of the slower species whichever species diffuses most slowly. And that's ions here. And the E field holds back electrons. And the second comment is that the, diffu the net ambipolar diffusion coefficient is about twice di, that is twice the slower species. So the ambipolar E field often about doubles. the diffusion rate of the slower species. OK, so the, then, uh, so again, the, the story here is that the particle flux is, um, because it's not equal for the electrons and ions, we have to take some account of that difference. And then taking account of that difference, we uh, find that the net rate of particle flux is, in fact, the, that governed by the slowest moving species. And then the, um, uh, the net rate is about twice uh, that of the slower species. OK, I think I'll quit here for just a moment and have a break, and then we'll come back. Um, uh, because uh, I'd be starting into a new topic, so I'll quit right here for a moment.